What can you say, folks? Another dreadful Monday in Detroit as the Lions are one and four. We got to get into it right here on Locked On Lions. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Monday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network on a Monday, October the 10th and a Tuesday, October the 11th. We talk Detroit Lions football with you. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. (laughs) Where do I begin? Patriots beat the Lions yesterday 29 to nothing. We're back on YouTube today. We had an audio only postcast yesterday. For those of you that missed it, go back and listen to my initial thoughts as to the disaster that was what took place yesterday up in Foxborough as the Lions no-showed against the Patriots, now head into a bye week, hoping to get some injured players back and offensively, defensively, licking their wounds for the next two weeks before they head to Dallas to face arguably the best defense in football. In the Cowboys, Micah Parsons and uh, company come calling in two weeks. Dallas will play this coming week. In Philly against the Eagles in a huge grudge match in the NFC East. Dallas 4-1, Philly 5-0. But the next three games are not going to be easy for this football team with Dallas, Miami, much improved Miami team, and uh, then the Green Bay Packers. But we appreciate you making us your first listen. We are brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. You can follow me on Twitter at Derry Speaks, D E R Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions on Twitter, the Matt Derry Facebook fan page. And again, we are on YouTube. Video show today is back on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Coming up on the show today, I got a a defensive stat, which will blow your mind. Uh, Somebody is not getting as much heat as somebody else in town. We'll explain that coming up. The PFF top five and bottom five grades from offense and defense yesterday. And uh, much more on what took place, certainly Sunday in New England, where this football team is right now, sitting at one and four. Everybody's angry. Everybody's upset. And Dan Campbell is taking a beating. And when you're 417 and 1, I understand it. I do. His 0 for 6 yesterday on fourth downs, the the decision making to go for it on fourth and nine when you've got a new kicker and you got a 49 yard field goal and, and you're late in the first half and you need some points and you're only down six nothing. And then the play call on fourth and nine took forever. Uh the throwing in, uh, on fourth and two short of the sticks, all of these things are on the coach. And Dan Campbell deserves some heat. And while Aaron Glenn's seat got a little bit hot over the last couple of weeks with how bad the defense has been, Dan Campbell's seat starting to warm up a little bit. No, I don't think he's going anywhere. Even if the team finishes with four or five or six wins this year, I don't think he's going anywhere. Um, I think they're going to win some football games. I think their, their schedule is still a little bit easier now. You look at the schedule and go, oh, start of the year, the Jets is a gimme. The Giants is a gimme. Now, all of a sudden, those two teams have winning records. Robert Sala has that team at three and two. Brian Dayball has the Giants at four and one. So don't give me this stuff about it's a rebuild. It's going to take some time. Teams are winning right away. The Minnesota Vikings have a new GM and a new head coach this year. They're not a rebuilding team, but they're four and one. And they're not even that great. The Lions cannot find ways to win. And yesterday, they got their ass kicked. They got absolutely pantsed by the Patriots. And, you know, I didn't really get into much of this yesterday because I, I don't want to talk his name, but Matt Patricia, you paid the Lions. The Lions paid Matt Patricia yesterday to beat them. It's like that uh, scene in Moneyball where Billy Bean is talking to David Justice. And Dave Justice, he says, you think you're special, David? And Justice goes, yeah, I am. You're paying me $6 million. He goes, no, 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 no. The Yankees are paying half your salary. They're paying you $3 million 
to play against them. The Lions are currently on the hook to still pay Matt Patricia the final year of his five-year contract or whatever it is. And he was paid yesterday to coach against them. That's why they don't call him an offensive coordinator or else he would have been forfeiting the money. He's like an offensive assistant. So he gets paid by both New England and the Lions. And yesterday, Matt Patricia's quarterback carved you up to the tune of 17 out of 21 and a pass rating of 100. Now, was Bailey Zappi the second coming of Tom Brady yesterday or Aaron Rodgers? No. But he certainly had time to throw. He certainly ran around Aiden Hutchinson and others that were in his grasp. Not, never was sacked. One time he was sacked, the Lions had a penalty, which called the sack uh, back. I think it was Isaiah Bugs, and the penalty was on Derek Barnes. Another fantastic Brad Holmes defensive draft choice. Oh, God. Dan, uh, Matt Patricia. Schooling the Lions. That is just surefire, on brand, order, order it off the menu. Same old Lions yesterday. What a pathetic performance. Dan Campbell said today that he feels like the defense has got better. And they had they were in the game. I guess. Let me give you a little stat about the defense for a second. Going back to the fourth quarter of the Minnesota game. All right, three games ago. You have Minnesota, Seattle, and New England. Going back to the fourth quarter of the Minnesota game. The Lions defense has been on the field for 23 defensive drives, if you want to call it that. 23 possessions, whatever. Other team possessions. 23 defensive drives. The Lions defense, and this includes yesterday, has given up in those 23 defensive drives. Eight touchdowns, seven fuel goals, three punts included in that stretch, 13 consecutive drives without uh, giving up are not uh, even allowing a punt, forcing a punt. Two end of half, end of games, one missed field goal, one interception, and one turnover on downs. If you want to do the math, 23 defensive drives, 15 scores given up. That's 65%. 65% of the time your defense, going back to the Minnesota game three games ago in the fourth quarter, You've allowed the other team to score. Yesterday, Jake Bailey punted the ball twice in the fourth quarter when the game was out of reach and it was already 26-0 and 29-0. So to sit here and say, and Dan Campbell said it today, defense gave us a chance. We saw some improvement. I don't see it. No sacks. They had one turnover. Nick Folk popping in those. Field goals, but the Patriots, you know, and Bill Belichick said it on his radio show this morning on WEI. We've we got to score more touchdowns. Yeah, they do. But they weren't playing Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, and Aaron Jones from 2019. They weren't playing Tom Brady, Mike Evans, and Gronk. This was Ramondre Stevenson, Jacoby Myers, and Stevenson's a good back, okay? And a third-string quarterback who, oh, by the way, hmm, who got a good long look at Bailey Zappi at the at the Senior Bowl? Oh, yeah, the Lions. Yeah, Lions are good. They got Nate Sudfeld in case anything happens to Jared Goff. They didn't need to draft a quarterback. <laughs> Pathetic. Pathetic. It's disappointing. It really is, because there was a lot of momentum going into this season. And I'm not turning the page. I'm not turning it off. I'm not turning the lights out on the season. But there has got to be some stark improvement coming out of the break here. They got to learn from this bye week. They got to get better. And they got to give Dallas a run in two weeks. Now, Dallas, their offense is nothing special. Cooper Rush has been playing, playing well on a dink and dunk. But their defense with Demarcus Lawrence... And Micah Parsons is sick. Dallas's defense is really good. But they're a beatable team. They're playing well. But why not go in there and win? 
This league, you got teams turning it around with ease right now. Not with ease, but the New York Giants yesterday improved to 4-1 and one with pretty much the same roster and a new coach and beat the Packers yesterday. Coming back from 17-3 to three down. Just throwing it out there. All right, coming up next, I'll get to those PFF grades. And uh, i got to give a little heat. we got to put a little heat on Bradley. We'll do that coming up next as well. But what about our friends at Prize Picks? Daily fantasy, making entries on players. So much fun. Tonight, Monday Night Football. Um, who is playing tonight? I'm trying to remember. Isn't that a poor job by me to not be prepared to give you the background on who is playing Monday Night Football tonight? That is my fault, and that is horrible. Las Vegas at Kansas City. All right, Las Vegas and Kansas City. So, play a little prize picks tonight. Give it a shot. It's amazing. It is daily fantasy with any sport at any time, and you do some projections. Tonight, you can take Patrick Mahomes to throw for more than 320 passing yards. Derek Carr, under 300. Whatever the projections are, you pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money excuse me, on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers this for the MLB playoffs as well. My Guardians are in the round two. Bring on the Yankees. Let's go. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Mm. Safe and fast withdrawals as well. Download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. It's fun. First-time users can receive a 100% Instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKED ON. If you deposit 100, prize picks will give you 100 back. If you deposit 50, prize picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter promo code LOCKED ON at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, I'm going to get you the uh, PFF grades in a second here. Uh, welcome back. Let me let me say this about the Dan Campbell um, snark and people getting angry at him and the and the bitterness. I don't think he's going anywhere. Like I said, he's got a six year contract. Oh, by the way, the team released kick returner Maurice Alexander today. <laughs> he he got a game ball for me yesterday. He wasn't bad on kick returns, but they apparently think that they're going to get healthy at wide receiver with Shark and Cephas and others. Uh, hopefully, coming back after the break. After the bye week. So that's probably why Maurice Alexander was let go. But Brad Holmes deserves uh, some flack as well. Number one, this roster isn't good enough. When you're starting yesterday and Savion Smith is back with the team and he flew back with the team, thank goodness he's okay after the concussion yesterday. But when you're starting Savion Smith, Will Harris, players like that, that means your roster is not good enough. Savion Smith was cut before the season started. He didn't make the team initially. He was then put on the practice squad. He was mostly a cornerback during training camp in the preseason. And now he was starting at safety in place of Deshaun Elliott, who, by the way, was picked up in free agency by Brad Holmes. All of these changes on defense to try to get a spark yesterday didn't work. All right, did the defense play better? Well, yeah. It's hard not to play any worse than they did two weeks ago against Seattle when they served up a 48 burger. So this roster is not good enough. And I don't know if, you know, we're, we're looking at Brad Holmes and going, all right, there's some guys here that he's drafted over two years that have done okay. Panay Sewell's a really good player. Amon Ross St. Brown was a great, not good, great mid-round draft pick by Brad Holmes. But like I said yesterday, Jack, Jack Jones is a stud fourth-round pick, rookie, cornerback for the Patriots. He's all over the field making plays. The Lions took Ifiatu Melifanwu in the third round last year, and he, he, you don't know where he, he, he is unplayable right now. Is he a corner? Is he a safety? They don't even know. He has been beaten out by practice squad players, guys off the street who are playing more than him right now. You know, Aleem McNeil was a pretty high draft pick. Levi Onzerike and all of these guys that Brad Holmes has drafted that aren't playing. 
Levi, and Pascal. He's drafted a ton of injured players. All right, good handful. Malcolm Rodriguez, very good pick. But again, he's a part of a defense that can't stop anybody. And this kicking situation is a farce. The Lions had Matt Prater here. The new regime came in, and I don't know if it was Rod Wood, because Rod's had a hand in things, whether you want to believe it or not, folks. Brad Holmes, who it was, didn't offer Matt Prater a second year, and he bolted for Arizona. Whether you're rebuilding or not, you still need to put the ball through the uprights. You still have to have an NFL kicker, and the Lions haven't had one. The closest thing they've had to an NFL kicker under Bradley Holmes is Riley Patterson at the end of last season when he was money. Now, Patterson was bad in training camp and and didn't make the team. Seibert was better. But Austin Seibert, you know, has now been let go. And the money badger, Michael Badgley, didn't get a chance to kick yesterday because the coaching staff wouldn't let him. There was a 49-yard field goal ready to rock yesterday in a 6 nothing game. And, uh, and Dan Campbell elected to go 4th and nine, So they don't have any faith in this guy either. Or they would have let him kick. And then the offense was so bad yesterday that they were rarely in field goal range. But early in the game, of course, they were. 4th and 1, didn't get it. 4th and 2, later in the game, don't need field goals. You're down 20 nothing, throwing it short of the sticks. Dan Campbell deserves a lot of heat, but Brad Holmes deserves a little flack too because this roster is not good enough, and this kicking situation is on him. Get a kick, get an NFL kicker in here and leave him on the roster. Or what are we doing with Badgley the next couple weeks? Are you going to let him kick in Dallas? Please, let him kick. Made four field goals two weeks ago for the Bears. But it's been handled so poorly. From the start of training camp last season, when the Lions had two kickers, Matthew Wright and Randy Bullock, who weren't good enough, and they got rid of both of them. Only then go get Seibert, who had been released by the Bengals. So, it's frustrating. Very frustrating. I didn't think this was a playoff team, but I thought they'd be better than this. Sitting at one and four. Guess what came in the mail today, folks? I wish I would have brought it down with me, my package of built Bars. That's right. I ordered some cookies and cream. I ordered a, some coconut bars, and I'm so happy. And I'm excited to tell you that there's a new built Bar Puff Out. Puff Out, excuse me. Voice is cracking. Yes, it is. Cookie Dough Chunk. It's amazing. Light, chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And, of course, they're covered in 100% Real chocolate. All of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Good snack, good mix of protein. You got to love it. Like all Built Bars, the new cookie dough chunk puff is, as I said, covered in 100% real chocolate. I love the puffs. They are phenomenal. It's like a marshmallow treat, but it's good for you. Seriously, get to Built.com now. Use promo code LOCKDOWN15 and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKDOWN15. The new cookie dough chunk puffs from Built Bar. All right, let's do this, our friends at Pro Football Focus, PFF. Top five and bottom five graded out players on offense and defense for the Lions yesterday in their 29-0 loss to Bill Belichick, Matt Patricia, and the New England Patriots. Craig Reynolds had the highest offensive grade for the Lions yesterday. Come on, Craig. 77.8 grade. Jamal Williams second at 77.6. Logan Stenberg, a surprise start at right guard yesterday, 72.9. Panay Sewell, 70.7. And Frank Ragnow, 70.7. Those are your top five Lion performers on offense. Bottom five on offense. Backup tight end Brock Wright, 43.4. TJ Hawkinson, 47.7. Ouch. Uh, Justin Jackson, 48.2. Jared Goff comes in at a 56.7. Not a good performance yesterday from QB1. And Jonah Jackson, 58.6. Those are your bottom five Lions offensive performers. On defense, there's going to be a surprise here. 
Uh, Mike Hughes, slot cornerback, 87.3. He was benched yesterday for A.J. Parker, still played 27 snaps, and put down an 87.3 score. Alex Anzalone, a Gaines Media Zone, 80.9 from the middle linebacker spot. Number three, Aiden Hutchinson, 80.1. Hmm. Even got a pass rush grade of 65.9. Aiden Hutchinson has not really flashed much in his first five games in the NFL, but he's been solid enough, and PFF agrees, 80.1. I'd like to see more, though, from the number two overall pick. Let's be honest here. Kirby Joseph comes in at a 71.7 fourth, and Austin Bryant got some more snaps yesterday, 69.1. Your bottom five Lion defenders. Get ready. Demetrius Taylor, Big Meech, 29.6. Bobby Price, 29.6. Michael Brockers, 30.2. Jeff Okuda, 31.2. Not good. I thought that second pass interference call on Okuda was unfair. I thought that was good coverage. And Derek Barnes, who seems to be bottom five Derek Barnes every week, 45.7. Those are your top five and bottom five Lion defenders from Pro Football Focus from yesterday. We'll see where this all goes. The Lions do need to get Pascal, Romeo Quara, Jerry Jacobs, uh, Jerry Jacobs, DeAndre Swift, Amon Ross St. Brown. All these guys, they need back. They need to get healthy. The bye does come at a good time. But I really thought they could beat Minnesota and Minnesota. And I thought they'd beat Seattle. I thought they'd beat uh, the Patriots. I thought they had a chance against New England. I actually picked New England to win the game. But still, next three games are not going to be easy. Dallas is playing well. Miami, what if two is back? Although Bridgewater got hurt yesterday, too. And then the Packers. Mm. We're going to find out a lot about this team and where they're going coming up in a couple of weeks. So that'll do it for a Monday edition of Locked On Lions. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day right here on the network. We are back again tomorrow.